Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review and revisiting for another an uh, revisiting for another anniversary review. Um, this time, uh, well, there's there's two there's there's two there's two more. I'm well, this is well, this is one of them, but I got another one to revisit. But um, for this one, I've reviewed this film already a while back, and it's another childhood film for me. And watched it a lot of times growing up, and I have it on the, I have it on an old VHS, but, but no, I don't have it here now though. Cause I have a, like I said, I have a lot of old VHS tapes that are stored away though, but I still have them. So, but um, but revisiting this one, I still enjoy the film to this day. And re 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 revisiting for 20th anniversary review of Air Bud. So yeah, the 20th anniversary of, of Air Bud is still a good Disney film. So it was released 20 years ago, around this time, at the beginning of August of 1997. Directed by Charles Martin Smith, who I like, I I do like as an actor, but he's also a decent he's a decent director as well as, as well. Um, Charles Martin Smith, as a director, he directed this film. And then he would later go on to direct the the two Dolphin Tale films, the first one from 2011, and the sequel in uh, 2014, I think. Yeah. So, I think I think it was it was Dolphin Tale in 2012. I forget the first one. It was around there, but then the sequel was in 2014. So, yeah. But the, as an actor, Charles Martin Smith. We may mainly remember him from The Untouchables. He, I mean, he was all, all, also mainly remember from from when he played the character Graves in um, Peter Benchley's The Beast. And he had little, and he had little roles as well, little small supporting roles. I remember he was in the opening of D uh, Deep Impact. He was the one that the who discovered the meteor coming to Earth, but he died in accidents before he can interact. But he's a recognizable guy, though. I I don't like Charles Martin, but he did a good, um, uh, good. Uh, he did a good a good job with the with the direction of the film. And star and it stars um, Michael Jeter, who is now sadly no longer with us. Sadly, Michael Jeter, you know, forever and well, mostly well known playing um, Dell from. Uh, Stephen King's *The Green Mile*, you know the guy who who was you know put with the mouse, Mr. Jingles, Dell, and um, also uh, Michael G Michael Jeter. He, he he played one of the cellmates of, of Tango and Cash in the film Tango and Cash. He was one of the cellmates, um, and I also mem I remember him from uh, being in *Jurassic Park* three. As the character Udesky wish, the nitpicks that I have, I wish he would have lived, but oh well. And he also had a little role in the Mouse Hunt. He's been in notable films. He he's recognizable because I enjoyed Michael Jeter. It's sad that he's now passed on. And also one thing I remember, he also played Mr. Noodle in Elmo's World. You know, when his little side show on Sesame Street, Elmo's World, he he plays Mr. Noodle. Well, there's two brother, two brothers, Noodles. So, he's one of the brothers, Mr. Noodle. But um, I like I enjoy Michael Sheeter, Michael Jeter. He's uh, he was a good actor. And it stars uh, uh, Kevin Ziggers, who plays Josh Fram. Um, which I'm a, oh, I remember I remember him from the remake of Dawn of the Dead. He was the character Terry, the young security guard. He was in the first Wrong Turn, um, which he came back for a couple of the sequels, in the Air Bud sequels. But um, for jo uh, for him playing Josh Ram in this film, he was he was good. I liked him. Um, when uh Wendy uh, Makina who plays uh, Josh's mom. Eric Christmas, who um, plays the judge at the end, appears at the end of the film. Uh, Bill Cobbs, who plays um, Arthur Cheney, he was a young uh, 
He was young. He was the best. He was a basketball player who played for the Knicks. And he got a uh, buddy here, which this was, uh, which I remember saying that dude. This is the same golden retriever that was, that played in, played Comet in Full House. I think I remember, I think I remember saying that. Yeah, he, he was the same dog that played Comet in Full House. And sadly, this dog is now passed on. He played the come. The same dog would be in the sequel, and that was it. He had you know multiple problems, and sadly, you now the dog is now passed on as well. But I enjoy I enjoy it as 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 a, as a good Disney film. It's a cute family film. Charles, um, uh, Michael Jeter, hey, he plays uh, Mr. Sn uh, Snively. Um, Norman Sn F. Snively. He's just cl he's a clown. He kind of like a, a, a he goes to this bir this birthday party and he kind of kind of like abuses his dog, which he calls him calls him Old Blue. Gives you know because he has like a newspaper. He's like, don't make me use this again. So he's a, he's a, abusive to the dog. But I guess you can see him with newspapers. Um, you know he's he's a clown that he, he sucks. He sucks everything that he does. And when they try to get his dog again, the kids oh yay! And when he tries to do a little uh, a, a, a grand finale trick, and it goes it goes disaster. Ruins the party. Gets his face and cake. And then he was gonna go report him to the to the dog pound. And then when it goes up a hill, the the uh, the, the the cage the, the buddy's in falls off of the back of his truck, and almost gets hit by um by a uh, Josh and his mom and his little uh, sister baby sister they're moving to um was it a fur what the, the the town is F Fernfield. They they're they're moving they're, they're moving to a new house, and uh, Josh's dad he's like now he's uh, he pat he's he um, died a, died a, a while back, so they're moving to this new this new town, and they see Buddy on the road but um, lets him out because it, it hits the cage but it lets him out though but then just moves on his own goes this which is a is abandoned um, basketball court, so he just hides there. And Josh is trying to fit in at the a new school. He meets these these uh, this this he he he, he befriends um a, a young uh, a kid I uh, forget the so the kid's name. Uh, I think the character's name is Stuart. I think the thing is. Then does the kid's name he makes a, makes a friend there, and there's also this other kid who calls him this um, uh, water boy. He's not a, like a bully though. But he just calls him names like that, water boy, which is actually is played by Brendan Fletcher, which I m m mainly remember him from playing in um, Goosebumps, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. He was he's like the kid who calls him water boy. So he wants him to join um. We try to fit in though, but also ask the coach who wants to join the basketball team, the Timberwolves, which is a team name that's been through all the sports that's been played throughout this whole series. It's there. All the teams are named as the Timberwolves. So it's in the basketball, football, soccer, uh, baseball, and volleyball. Yeah, Timberwolves is the name of all of all the sports in this in this, in this film series. So he makes it into the team. Um. And before he, um, when he, well, he finds the old basketball court, and then he finds Buddy there, in all the ragged, so the ragged clown clothes, and he, he, try, he takes him into the house, brings him to the house, you know, gives him a bath and all that, and he likes the, the Josh's basketball, and when he gets all nice and clean, when Josh was trying to ask about his mom, about... Can he have a pet and all that? And the buddy um, knocks the basketball, and makes a mess out of the, of the stuff that's in the living room, gets them all covered in paste, and 
But eventually his mom lets him keep him anyway. But then I said he gets and he gets uh, onto the basketball team, uh, the school's basketball team, and he uh, talks with a, a guy who's uh, the like the janitor of the place, um, uh, played by Bill Cobbs, which his name is Arthur Cheney, and the guy rec the kid recognizes him because he has a he has a basketball card of a younger Arthur Cheney on the baseball card, which he said that he said oh that guy's dead already or something like that, and then but when he was leaving. He hears something in the in the basketball court, and he sees the guy shooting some hoops and doing his old uh, basketball stuff that he did. Um, so he knows that that that's him. And then you get this running gag thing that um, Buddy's been stealing uh, Josh's mom's uh, pa newspapers. Every time when the paper comes up, he takes them, buries it, and the mother's like. Where's the newspapers? You know, just looking. Um, and then one night when, um, well, well, but before that, when on the basketball court, he's shooting hoops, and then he goes and throws at a freshman because about his um, it was about about his dad, and then all of a sudden, he, he, uh, buddy just goes and shoots the ball into the hoop, and he sees, he goes, no way, does it again? He shoots it in the hoop. Does it a lot of times, and then then during the night um, when he's doing his uh, playing on the basketball, um, but he's at home. But he falls all the way, goes all the way to the school, and and it's it, okay. I thought I thought I was as a growing up as a as a little kid, a growing up. I thought it was kind of funny and cute at the same time. He goes and runs into the basketball court, just goes and. Tries to just gets the ball and all the all the team players trying to grab him, and you have um the the, the referee I also remember the referee, the guy who, I who plays the referee he's been in other films as well I recognize him as well. Um. But then um, he shoots in the hoop and then everyone's like stunned and they're all like all plotting. Um. And then after the game is done. Um, they go back to the basketball court, they see that the coach is being abusive to the kid, Stewart, because he keeps on dropping the ball, and he keeps on throwing basketballs at him, and then the principal, and then the principal fires him, and so Miss, uh, Josh, uh, goes to the principal, uh, he knows he can get, a, could be a new coach, and he recommends, um, Arthur Cheney, Bill Cobbs, and one thing about Bill Cobbs, a lot of people sit in for, He's a, he's a, he's an actor. He's been mainly mainly supporting roles so, though. But this is like the big the, the biggest role that this guy has been in though. A lot of people don't recognize this guy uh, nowadays. I mean, the last appearance I, the last appearance of Phil, he's been in it was all the way back until I remember it was 2013 in um, Sam Raimi's Oz, the great the great and powerful. He's he's a record he's a recognizable he's a, he's a recognizable recognizable, ugh, recognizable actor if you see him. He's been in the films. He's a guy to me. He's like Bill Cobbs. I know him. It's just I wish he would be more of a star in more bigger, bigger films. You know, much more roles and stuff like that, though. But this is me, though. But I like Bill Cobbs. So he's been recommended as the new coach of the team, and he's like, he's like, we'll start off like pretending, you know, pretending to pass, start using the ball. You know, if we're passing all that, and Brendan Fred is like, what is this? I don't see nothing. And they do like a quick pass, and it's like, oh, you're too slow on that, and all that stuff. And when the, by the next game, um, he's doing something wrong, and then Bill Cobbs kicks him off the team. Well, well, actually, you know, he had to kick him off the team. His dad, he was, because he was mad, he put he, he benched him, and then he told them they both got up and left. And then when the one game, when... Uh, Josh was down. Uh, uh, had the ball is coming down to the last second. He had a chance to shoot to win the game, but he doesn't. But during, but during like during like the halftime part, um, he has like a buddy in like in in basketball clothes, you know, wearing shoes and all that. Cute. Do like a, like a half like a halftime special where he shoots the balls and the hoops, and but also shows the the the. the the Timberwolves are going to the finals, and while it's going, Michael Jeter as a Snively, he sees it on TV. He notices that's his dog, 
and he goes to Josh's Josh's house and talks with his mother, tell him that's his dog. He has like the papers to prove that this is that's his dog, and Josh is like no, and Snively puts him back into the car um, to the cage and drives away, and Josh is all, you know, he's crying all that and. And then, and when one t one time when um, at school, he gets he says, he says an envelope from that Arthur Cheney he signs that that basketball card that he gave him, and he gives he finds out where Snively, Snively where he lives because he gave him the business card and all that, and he's talking on the phone and buddies in the backyard. Uh, tries to get him off that Cheney that leash he's on, and when. <laughs> Of course, it gets to my fair, my fair part of the movie. It always has been my fair part of the movie when the whole thing with Snively is that he sees him and then he he yanks the the chain where he kicks the 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 back faucet and he gets, he's getting all wet and he tries to yank and but they get away and then of course the wife like I said my favorite part is he tries to get in his car and it's all falling apart and he's just driving his all the stuff from his car his truck is falling apart. <laughs> and he's like, "Hey!" And then when he gets to go, goes up to towards the 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 lake, I would say, and of course, this this is where I, I laugh the most growing up is when when he gets when he gets to the dock when he's approaching the dock, and just the look on his face is like, <laughs> has that oh shit look on his face, and he tries to he breaks his, his steering wheel just goes and breaks right off his hands. I just love that part with the moment with the steering wheel, with the steering wheel just just yanked off as he tries to turn. And he's like, I need that, and then <laughs> to see that the steering wheel just goes and rolls away. <laughs> I just I love the, I love that part. That's that's the part I love the most of growing up. Is I I just love that part of the steering wheel whole scene. He has that oh shit look on his face, and then <laughs> uh. That's all the the whole chase scene and then the, the losing the steering wheel. That's my my fair best part of the film for me. And then of course of course he's, he's driving straight into the water. Of course he had a chance to go and jumps out of the truck though, but he doesn't though. So he just just goes and stays in the truck and just jumps right into the lake. So the the Josh you know he wants to he wants to let Buddy go and so he makes him run for the back of the boat, and leaves him there. And then when it comes to the 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 game night. His team, his team is losing. Then, Buddy comes running in. Everyone's applauding, and he's happy to see him. Then, gets back in the dress, in the basketball outfit, and then the, um, Larry. That's Brendan Fletcher, Brendan Fletcher's character's name. Larry. His dad and the coach are all arguing with the referees, like. The the referees are saying in the book, hey, there ain't no rules that a dog can play basketball. So then the the, the team starts catching up. They're start they're 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 coming back. Um And then I'll, by the end by the end of it, um Josh is in the same position where it's the last second, he has the, the chance to to hit to throw a three pointer, which he does. He wins. They win the game. Then Snively comes comes back, wants his dog back, but then um, goes and takes him to court. takes takes him to court. Comes in wearing his clown outfit, and uh, the judge, played by Eric Christmas, which ironically in the same year, Eric Christmas and Michael Jeter will, be, will start together in later in the year of Mouse Hunt. But he, the judge says, you know, you look like an idiot. He goes, why, thank you, sir. And he was gonna show me as a pay the papers or the custody the custody papers, but since he had it on him when he wins the lake, they're all socked up and they're no good no more. And every each time the the judge is hitting the gavel, the dog barks. And then Arthur Cheney comes in saying, "Let the dog choose." And the judge, well, before like look, like, he says, oh, "Who who are you?" And he's like, Arthur Cheney, you honor. And then the judge's like, Arthur Cheney? New York Knicks? 56? I was at that Celtics game when you did the spin on turn on the buzzer. I spilled beer. 
all over my wife, and everyone starts laughing. <laughs> yeah, but then he says, let it buddy decide, then he agrees to it, so they take it outside the courthouse. You know, jo uh, Josh is here, Snively's here, and Buddy's in the middle, and they begin calling to him, you know, to come to who's who wants to come to. And then Snively goes to take some newspapers, like, look what daddy's got for you. But then he rem remembers what happened, and he tells him, get over here, and then just goes and rips the newspaper up and runs to Josh. And the judge, you know, but power must me, I grant the war of the custody of the dog to Josh Fram. Case closed, thank God. <laughs> and then, and then he, he couldn't, and uh, Snively comes running towards him, and the judge is like, well, says like, well, somebody suppress that clown. And then the, the guards, they carry him away, literally, car literally carry, carry him away. And then everyone gathers around, and everyone's happy. And yeah, the the the, the score by um, um, let's see who did the music by Bram Wenner, Winger, w Wenger, what's the name? Yeah, but da 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 Hey, that's a decent. It's a it's a pretty decent score. I remember the it's a score. I remember growing up. So yeah. So yeah, twenty years later, Airbud it hasn't lost it hasn't lost the charm that it had. It has a it has a very good Disney Disney charm to it. And I I enjoy I enjoy Michael Michael Jeter. May he rest in peace. He's he's a hoot to watch. Uh, Kevin Ziggers he did he still did fine when he did and uh, the dog a dog a buddy. He was cute, and especially wearing wearing it to look his his uh, basketball helper with the little shoes and all that, and to help him with the dog trainers, give I give credit to them as well. Charles Martin Smith, he did he did a good job directing the film. Score was like, was decent. Um, the supporting as well as supporting cast, uh, Wendy McKenna, I thought she still did fine playing as the mom. Eric Christmas, even though he appeared at the end. Of, and he's in the, he's like in the main support in the main part of the cast there, but he appears until the at the end of the film as the judge. <laughs> but he was still fine too. Bill Cobbs, he this guy should be recognized more be recognized more. Also, he was in a supporting role in Demolition Man as well. His way he was a uh, he was an older guy that uh, Stallone knew back before he was fro before he was frozen. He's like no, Zach Lamb, is that you? What happened to you? He's like I got older. You know, shit, you are a good pilot. Yeah, so he, he, even Bill Cobbs, he was in a little role in Demolition Man as well. So, yeah. And he also he had a little small role in Polly as well, that parrot film. That Tony Shalhoub was in the, at the place. Yeah. But after the Bill Cobbs, he's a guy that should, should be recognized more. That's what that's like, you know. They get these little the actors appear in films over the years. They've only been like in sup small supporting roles, but you recognize them. Who like, oh, I know him. He's been in, like in other films in supporting roles. I mean, like Bill Cobbs to me, like this is like this biggest role that he's had. I was I would say, and probably more memorable in starring in this. He's a guy to me. He's a guy. He should just give he given more roles and you know more bigger roles. I don't think he's never played a lead before. I don't think I remember. I don't, I don't think I remember. I'm just saying he's a guy who should be recognized more. Bill Cobbs. If you know who he is, recognize him. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah. But yeah, all the supporting cast was good. He was he was good. He he's, he's still good. He still is good. I would still say that. Michael Jeter, uh, one of the best parts of the film. I, I enjoy the hilarious chase where his his truck is falling apart and. Especially him losing his steering wheel. That's the that's the favorite part of the truck losing, losing all the mechanical parts of the truck. Losing the steering wheel was my, was what I laughed the most at. So yeah. So it's another review, another re revisit review. Um, it did it did it did modestly well at the box office on a budget of three million. So it was a very small budget made, but and it made twenty seven million. So it was it was a modest hit. And of course, it was mixed with critics. It has a 5.1 IMDb and it's a 20, uh, 43% of Rotten Tomatoes. 
I would give it much higher. I would give it much higher rating. Um, then this was here for Newsday, Kids Day, it's called it. A heartwarming family comedy that'll make you feel good. I would agree with that. It certainly made me feel good. It was heartwarming to it. It had a good heartwarm. It was heartwarming, I would say, for a family film. It had a good charm to it. It was a cute uh, Disney film as well. So, yeah. I, I still enjoy this film to this day. Another childhood uh, Disney film that I grew up watching. Never lost, never lost that charm to it. And as I said, Michael Jeter, may he rest in peace. Um, but yeah, so hope you enjoyed my, my the, the 20th anniversary re revisit review for Air Bud. And the next film we were doing because the film didn't make that much money because there was one film that came out around the same, almost the exact same time. And that it will be, stay tuned for that, is my 20th anniversary revisit review of the action classic Air Force One. Which, yeah, because that came out a week before this came out, though, but this film, that film was still making money, was, like, number one for a couple weeks. So, yeah, it, 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 still did, it still did good, though, but it was Air Force One that was making the money at the time. So that's going to be the next one for the, for the next anniversary review I'm going to be reviewing, and yet, slash, revisiting. But I hope you enjoyed the revisit of this, uh, the 20th, an 20th, anniver 20th anniversary revisit review of this film. Still a Disney classic to me. I'd give it definitely a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on the next movie review. Later.